coming from the tires. Can I save a little bit for what you do? Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt. Before we get into today's video, what is your most hated piece of cardio equipment at the gym if you go? Mine has got to be the Rogue Echo bike. I hate that thing. No matter how hard I push that thing, it just kills me every time and you're just watching those calories and they're just not going up. Anyways, we've got a body armor test to do today. This plate is from Tactical Scorpion Gear. This is their level four plate. It weighs five pounds, 11 ounces. It's approximately 950,000 thick. The plate that you see here is actually the flat model. They offer a single curve and multi-curve. So for our purposes, this flat one will do very nicely. For all of our body armor testing, I try to stick to as many constants as possible so that you can take some valuable information away from this as you guys are trying to make your buying decisions. We shoot at 45 feet, which is the NIJ testing distance for rifles. We also shoot at zero degrees. That is worst case for the armor, best case for me as the shooter. Since this does have a ceramic strike face, we've gone ahead and dropped it on its face twice. You'll notice that I've marked some lines on the outer edge of this plate because this plate has a foam ring that I can detect on here so it does not have edge to edge strike face. We use a chronograph whenever possible so we can grab those velocity numbers off those rounds. It's about 80 to 85 degrees outside today as well. Pretty hot and muggy but it's overcast so it's not too bad. We also put a spreadsheet here at the beginning of everything that I'm going to shoot at it so we foreshadow what you're going to see and at the end we fill it all in with the data and you get a you know easy knowing whether it's penetrated or not. We also use this giant clay briefcase that you see here with Roma number one plastilina clay donated by Chavant. I'll put their link in the description below so that if you guys are needing some ballistics clay or if you need to refresh your box, you got an easy link to go check them out. Hey, wait a minute, those clothes are different. Exactly, on a different day. I ran out of time when I recorded the intro for our tactical scorpion gear, so we are here on a different day and different time. Now I've gone ahead and changed up the camera angles. I just want to give you guys a different perspective. If you don't like this camera angle, let me know in the comments below. If you like the camera angle, let me know in the comments below. Since this is a level four plate, we're going to go right to the specification, which is M2AP at 2880 feet per second, plus or minus 30 feet per second. Then I have my 300 wind chad plus P plus armor destroying variant. That should be right around 3150 to almost 3300 feet per second, depending on the day. It's a little cooler outside today, but we do have the suppressor on there. So we should see a little extra velocity. We'll take two shots at this plate. The standard pressure will be the upper left, and then the plus P plus will be on the right side. Then we'll go see what we did. We have a TC compass with a 24 inch barrel. We've got the JK armament rifle kit up front. Let's rock and roll. A little faster, my battery's dying on my chronograph. I will change that out in a second. Really good velocity on that. Let's go see what we did, folks. You will have to forgive any slowness today. I am by myself, so I do not have a camera woman or a helper child for the straps. Here was our standard pressure M2AP right there. Here was our overpressure. We were really close to that one. I wonder, it looks like from just here, it looks like they're using hexagon tile array for the strike face. Yeah, I see hexagon tiles in there. The tear down on this will prove pretty interesting. Place those bets in the comments below. Ruh oh raggy. Ho! Oh, that's a penetration right there. Now, I have to zoom in on that if I can. That one looked like it had to work to get through there. That wasn't a clean cut hole. You can see it's kind of going sideways. I wonder if I place that shot 
more off to the side if it would have stopped it. Now the interesting part for, for us, that, that M2AP++ is you know always overkill. It's cool if a plate can stop it, but real world, not a lot of use. But our back face on our standard pressure is pretty, pretty low. There's a bump there, but not too significant. It's gonna be hard because of how close that is to here. But this was flat when I started. So it's about 11 millimeters, not too bad. Again, this clay has to be really warm and it's calibrated. It's the same clay, but it's just there for compressible media. And this is a giant thing to stick the armor on so it doesn't get rocked around. Time for another set of potential armor killers. First, we have M993AP, or NAMO, Armor Piercing Number 8. That is the Army's current issue actual armor piercing round in 308. It's 130 grain with a cute little tungsten penetrator. Then we have M80A1. That is the Army's current ball replacement round for M80. It's 130 grains as well. Has a copper core with a nice large hardened steel tip. And then this guy over here is a P80 black tip or M61, early 60s, 70s, 80s armor piercing round for 308. Has a 152 grain bullet with a hardened steel core, kind of like M2AP, but a little different design. Now in the past with M993, anything at a, over a 16 inch barrel usually penetrates level four. So we're gonna use our CZ-557 here with our JK Armament rifle kit for the M993. Then we'll switch to a 22 inch barrel for the other two 308 threats. It will be interesting because of that tile array on there that we're you know, localizing that trauma. So I'm gonna take this shot probably down left of the plate Really good velocity there. Now we have our 22 inch TC compass out. Still have the suppressor on there. We'll take the M80A1 shot first. In the past, even at 300 wind mag speeds, M80A1 has been unable to penetrate most level four plates. This shot will probably be in the middle. Really good velocity off that. And then this shot will be in the middle, but we're gonna go to the extreme right. All right, let's go down and see what we did. My poor little straps are broken. These seem to hold up better than the rubber ones, but if you get a couple shots on them, they tend to blow apart, and there's nothing really to recover off of them. Thank you, Patreon supporters. Your dollar a month goes a long way for buying straps. But seriously, I do appreciate my Patreon supporters as much as possible because some of this stuff is not cheap. I mean, this shot down here, this was our M993. Those are about $30 around. This was the M80A1. I think those are around eight to $10 around. And here is our P80 black tip. I think I've been buying those around four to $5 around. Enough whining and complaining. Shut up and show me the results. My table is also taking the beating. Maybe Scott at Kentucky Ballistics could uh, sponsor me some tables. No way. No freaking way. Anytime we've been using M993 in these last couple of armor tests, they've been punching through the armor, but it stopped it. And the dimple, yeah, about as much as the M2AP. 
there was our p80 black tip right there i would say that dimple's even larger than that one our m80a1 just a tiny mosquito bite uh, i got my depth gauge here so our m993 right around 26 millimeters 27 for the m80a1 interesting that it shows more in the clay than it does on the back of the plate about 29 maybe even a little more hard to say like i said it's really hard to measure this but impressive a little more the back face signature on the p80 is larger than the other two and again, this is a flat plate, so this is probably going to show, you know, the worst amount of back face. Probably if you were going to buy one of these, you want the single curve or the multi-curve. The, the flat plate works out a little better for me, so I don't have to build up the clay. But color me impressed. M993 stopped it. Now, how about our 556 five, threats? I think we're ready to wrap up our testing of our tactical scorpion gear with our 556 five, threats. Now, some of our plates lately have been having a little trouble with the 22 inch, so we've brought it out in full force today, again with the JK Armament rifle kit on there, so we're seeing full velocity potential out of our 5.56. I probably could get a 24 inch barrel, but I don't know too many places that make a 24 inch barrel, so I think a 22 is that good real world maximum, but likely you encountering someone at 45 feet with this bolt gun probably not going to happen. You're going to have an engagement long ways down the way. Get hit one time, you should get the heck out of Dodge. So I've got M193. That is the Army's 55 grain full metal jacket round. I have M855A1. That is the Army's current issue ball round, 62 grain full metal jacket, enhanced performance round. Has a conical little steel tip there with a copper core. And finally, we have a 52 grain Barnes TSX all copper going pretty fast i think it's 52 grains there's enough spots on this plate that we should have no trouble placing these shots i will try to call them out so i do not forget where i put them Do I need all the zooms, Mr. Hooty Hoo? All the zooms? How about, about number five? So this one I am going to place above the M99 above the M993 shot. Pretty good velocity out of that. This one. I am going to place above the P80 black tip shot. Hopefully I didn't put it right on top of that shot. This one will be right next to the M993 shot. Really good velocity out of that one. The Independence M193 is really hot, but it's probably very inconsistent. Now on to the A1. I'm gonna place this right next to that last M993 shot, or M193 shot, sorry. Good velocity out of that. And then this one will be right next to that same last, or will be right next to the last shot. And then our TSX. Uh, um, <laughs> Let's place this to the left of the P80 shot to the right of the M80A1. Right where I wanted it. All right, let's go see what we did after all that talking. Fuffer and fuck a tash. I made a meth out of this plate. All right, hopefully I label these right. If I didn't, that's why I always review them and will annotate differently. But 
M193, 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 M855A1, M855A1, and then RTSX. Some of these I probably wouldn't consider a fair hit. Look at how close that guy is, that one. So, not sure what we're going to see. But so far, I've been very impressed with this plate. I think with the tile rays, going to these hexagon tiles is offering one of the better abilities for being multi-hit capable over a solid strike face and even over the larger like two by two square tiles. Look at that. No pass throughs folks. Five, five, six, no nah problem. Now if I did throw M995 at this, it may have stopped it out of the 16 inch barrel. 22 may have been iffy. That's where the problem lies with that particular armor piercing cartridge. But impressive, even this edge shot down here. This must be a really high quality silicon carbide and it's doing a really good job at breaking up that projectile so that after it destroys the ceramic, the polyethylene is there to catch it. There's a little bit of back face signature there. That one looks to be about the worst. About 16 millimeters, give or take. Impressive. Let's tear this bad boy down. All right, it didn't take me too long to tear this guy down because I was pretty mean to it. Let's talk about the backer, the polyethylene here. Looks to be of really good quality. I'm not sure how you tell the difference between the quality of polyethylenes. I know there's different grades. This appears to be a higher grade or they have some different kind of manufacturing process that is keeping all these smooshed layers together very well because the back face on this thing is not extreme. I mean, we've seen a lot worse from other plates. I like that there is a foam edge protectant for any strikes on the outermost edge. That's a good thing. Looks like they had pretty good adhesion between the ceramic and the polyethylene, but I'd like to see better because I peeled it apart pretty easily. Now we move over here to the strike face. As I mentioned, this is not a full edge to edge strike face. Doing so adds weight, but when they test these the nij tests at a minimum of two inches they never shoot at the edge but for me i would prefer to have as much ceramic as possible all the way out to the edge even if it costs me a little bit of weight so i'd like to see that halved if possible here are these little hexagon tiles i will have to annotate how thick they are but maybe four hundred thousandths just guessing now it does look like there is a little bit of foam on the front of this strike face. I'd like to see them add a thicker foam, like three to five millimeters, kind of like this white foam. Put that all the way on the front. You're gonna, you know, gain an eighth of an inch or so in overall thickness. But if you fall on your plates, no problem. This seemed to hold together pretty well. You can see that multi-strike ability with these tiles. I mean, we've got quite a bit of ceramic left. Now, one thing I noted on the HESCO L210 plate is they did a really good job of bonding the ceramic together by using either fiberglass or polyethylene and some really heavy adhesives. So they kept all that ceramic as possible inside this plate as long as possible so that it stood a better chance for taking hits. You can see there's a lot of silicon carbide all over my desk or my table I should say I'm not sure if that's uh, healthy to breathe in there but overall I'm really impressed with this setup they're using quality materials we're able to stop m993 let's close this one out folks well everyone our tactical scorpion gear level 4 plate is certainly dressed to impress that hexagon tile array ceramic strike face went a long way in providing us with multi-hit capability. This is one of the few plates that I've tested that was able to stop M993 
AP out of our 16 inch after taking two other hits beforehand. If you remember the ESAPI Rev E plate, I'll put a little card somewhere you can go check it out. That plate could not defeat the 16 inch M993. Our 556 threats for this plate were no problem at all. M80A1 as well. Our M2 AP plus P plus variant was really the only problems that this plate had. Back face wise, very controlled. Again, I'm not an NIJ lab, so in real world testing, you may see more back face, but we've certainly seen larger dimples in the back of our plates when we've tested them. I want to issue an open challenge. I'm trying to find some X sappy plates. Maybe you know somebody that's got some, or you're a manufacturer that's got some, and you would release them to me on some kind of contract that I would shoot them and destroy the contents of them. Or maybe you've got something that's better than X sappy. I'm issuing a challenge for some kind of armor plate that will stop M993 AP out of the 22 inch barrel. And if it can do that, I want to see that same plate or something stop our 338 Lapua Magnum AP at 45 feet. Well everyone, it's about time for me to get out of here. I skipped a gym day to come out here and do some shooting. I'm glad I did. I certainly enjoyed it. Don't worry, I didn't skip leg day. It was a running day and I've already done that this week, so I like this a lot better. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible, especially in 2021. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is Tactical Scorpion Gear, who in full transparency sent me that armor to test at my leisure with no strings attached. If you guys want to see me test more of their armor, I think I really want to test their 3 Plus Extreme, see if you can stop my armor killing 22 inch TC Compass in 556. You know, drop me a comment below, or if you see them in any social media posts posting about products and things, tag me and say, hey, Matt over at the range wants to test your armor. And finally, of course, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Maybe you're a manufacturer that's got some super secret sauce. Well, it's about, it's about time for me to get the heck out of here. I skipped a gym day to come out here and enjoy this beautiful weather. It was really nice outside today. But don't worry, it wasn't a leg day. It was a bunch of stupid bugs. Last time. Well, it's about time for, well, it's about time for me to get the heck out of here. 